It's Miller time. Killer could be anyone. A lawyer, a banker, a rickshaw driver on the street. You, me, anyone caught in a moment of passion. Tonight we're traveling across the Atlantic on a very special episode of Unsolved Mysteries, investigating the case of India's most notorious female serial killer, a young nurse at Grady Bombay, accused of murdering 22 patients with the common chemical diethylene glycol. Before Shivangi was ever employed at Grady Bombay as a nurse, she was simply a young woman studying at the Medical College of India, where unbeknownst to her, she was also the object of a young medical student's hopeless love. This student would go on to become the brilliant doctor and famed toxicologist V.J. Ram, the attending physician in the ICU where Shivangi would later go on her alleged killing spree. Did the fates conspire to bring these two back together again? After graduation from nursing school, Shivangi joined the Grady Bombay staff, where Dr. Ram's bitterness caused repeated arguments between the two. They worked in close proximity, often attending to the same patients. A few weeks after Shivangi's arrival, a disturbing trend appeared in her patients. They all began to complain of abdominal pain and showed signs of inebriation. As time went on, some patients suffered from renal failure. When the first patient died, hospital administrators contacted the authorities. Shivangi and Dr. Ram were both taken in for questioning. You've been experiencing renal failure and you have not noticed it? I, I just... I just Your incompetence has reached its limits, nurse. You don't deserve this anymore. <laughs> Doctor, can you explain to me how paracetamol syrup, such a commonly used drug, could kill so many patients? Well, officer, as you've seen at our world-class hospital, Grady Bombay, we have the finest system of quality controls for all of the medications that we administer to patients. We found in all the autopsies trace amounts of DEG. So it seems to me who was, whoever was in possession of paracetamol last was the one who administered DEG into the medication. What is DEG? How does it work? And is there any kind of antidote? Well, I'd be happy to explain it to you, officer. Do you know what this is? It looks like a car. Very good, very good. Now, in cars you find antifreeze, and you most commonly see DEG in the antifreeze in cars. However, at our hospital, we found it in the paracetamol supply, where it's not supposed to be. Now, what is diethylene glycol? It's this chemical compound right here, and through the actions of alcohol dehydrogenase, and alcohol dehydrogenase, it's turned into the toxic byproduct, HEAA. HEAA causes damage to the neuron right here. It causes damage to the myelin sheet and it disrupts conduction of neurons. And it also causes damage in the proximal convoluted tubal of the nephron. Now, going back to diethylene glycol, you asked about the antidote. Well, one thing we could do is administer ethanol to patients to competitively inhibit the alcohol dehydrogenase so that the diethylene glycol does not bind to the alcohol dehydrogenase, the ethanol does. But you still look a little bit confused. Let me try this again. Diethylene glycol is a clear, colorless, and odorless liquid with a sweet taste. It is made up of two ethylene glycol molecules linked by an ether bond. DEG is commonly used as a solvent for water and soluble chemicals and is a component in antifreeze. If ingested, it is rapidly absorbed and distributed through the body into regions that are particularly well perfused. While more research is needed to determine the precise mechanisms, for many studies, scientists believe that oxidation of the intact DEG molecule is a probable metabolic pathway leading to toxicity. 
DEG is metabolized by ADH oxidation to form 2-hydroxyethoxyacetaldehyde, which is rapidly metabolized by aldehyde dehydrogenase to HEAA. Due to numerous animal studies, scientists believe HEAA is the major contributor to renal and neurological toxicity. Renal toxicity arises mainly from proximal convoluted tubular degeneration, and those are localized to the cortical regions alone. This manifests as cortical infarctions and or necrosis. Final clinical phase includes neurological effects including lethargy, dilated pupils, and loss of visual and auditory function. Effects of DEG have also included decreased nerve conduction velocity, followed possibly by demyelinating neuropathy. What are you doing here? Well, I just wanted to come by and bring you your favorite drink. It's a Starbucks half-calf soy latte with honey and extra cream. How, how did you know? Because she was the last person in possession of the paracetamol syrup, Shivangi was arrested and charged with 22 counts of first-degree murder. But she never had her day in court. She died in prison, alone, except for the rats. The autopsy revealed DEG poisoning was the source of her death. So the question remains, did she kill herself the same way she killed her victims? Or was she a pawn? in a larger plan. This story will remain yet another unsolved mystery.